And now we move on to Philip Horst, our last uh, contribution for this session, who is an artist and co-founder of the Artist Collective Kunstrepublik and the Center for Art and Urbanism in Berlin. Setko. Thank you. So I picked from the statements a few keywords. They are tactic, alternative action in every day, pop-up institution, dialogue with power and empowering. And I would like to um, kind of illustrate from our practice, from Kunstrepublik, that um, we are three, three men, Matthias Einhoff, Harry Sachs, and myself, um, how we create places of encounter and discourse. And I'm going to show you a few examples on different scales, on different motivations, how they came to life. So the first one, um, it's called the Fountains of DC, and it was a public art commission in Washington, DC in 2012. And while researching for ideas on how we can contribute, we came along kind of three narratives. One was um, the existence of the temperance movement. Temperance movement existed end of the 19th century to temperance the drinking people, and the alcohol people were drank were mostly produced by Germans. So there was a kind of group, the temperance movement, who placed fountains near to the pubs where the alcohol was drunk to give an alternative to give fresh water um, to the pe people in public spaces. So we made a kind of, oh, this is the third one I forgot, is a, the, um, the straight edge movement came up in the 80s, uh, hardcore punk, don't smoke, don't drink, don't fuck. And we brought these kind of reformist movements together in this fountain by copying this fountain, making it mobile, and equip it with a new kind of, like a new fountain, so there was wa water, and a sound system. So you could use it as a tool for your reformist movement, for a demonstration tool. So in the, um, you see it on the left, uh, there are words inscribed on the four sides of the fountain. Um, it, is, it was faith, hope, charity, and temperance, very moral words. And we made this um, yeah, movable by exchanging the letters and adjusting the reformist tools to the kind of demands of the people who use it. So here you can see it in action. Um, this was during a demonstration when Trevor Martin, he was like a black guy, was shot. And um, we brought it into the demonstration and then suddenly also the, the whole appearance changed. I mean, first of all, and that's maybe um, also something um, which, which can be applied to um, the forms of uh, Tanya Bouguer was talking about, about preconceived responses, like forms you see. The normal protest signs would be uh, like signs you carry around. And so we, we chose another kind of architecture for this. But in this sudden special case, because it was, a, it was a kind of memorial also for someone who was killed, it became a grave suddenly. We were pushing in this thing and the, the people were opening up and suddenly became a kind of uh, symbol for... Yeah, for a, for a grave. So this is an example how an artistic action can spark a whole process of uh, city urban planners discourse. Um, this, was, this happened two years ago on Alexanderplatz. Alexanderplatz is the eastern center of Berlin in a house, in not only a house, it's a whole block. Uh, which used to be the house of statistics of the GDR, was empty for eight years. And um, during the recent years, a lot of spaces <coughs> got um, vanished in Berlin, got more expensive, a lot of people had to move out, especially artists lost their, lost their, their studios. And um, the action was to put up a, a sign demanding or rather stating that this will be turned into a space for art, culture, and social. Um, and this kind of action was took up. Was co uh, there were some coalitions with uh, politics, and we started to host some workshops in working on strategies on really how to turn this into a place for culture and social. And um, now, with a new government uh, of left 
Social Democrats and Greens, it's um, already inscribed in the coalition contract that this should be a model uh, for the future usage. And uh, Christoph, I think, will tell, he's also part of the initiatives, will tell a bit more tomorrow. So I, I leave you with this. So uh, just I wanted to show how this artistic action can kind of start uh, a new reality. Something on a smaller scale we uh, started in 2012 is the Center for Arts and Urbanistic. It's a um, former railway depot. And um, we have also a kind of unique situation here because we have the house and the grounds for 40 years lease. So we have a long perspective on developing this site. And um, we call it Center for Arts and Urbanistic to connect art and the urbanistics, which means not only the architectural and uh, city planning, but rather the kind of social issues of a city. How can we live together in a city? And uh, therefore, we have a um, residency program with 13 studios, um, with yeah, artists, researchers, activists working on these issues. And um, beside this artistic uh, ways of working, we are presenting inside um, the institution and also outside. Um, we develop different um, formats to to also reach out to a larger audience, which are outside the kind of arty and uh, scientific uh, audience. Um, and these, these formats often fuse uh, different elements. For example, here you have a, uh, the World Championships. And uh, we placed TVs all around uh, the surrounding and made people come together. So instead of everyone looking at, the, at their mobile phone, they all kind of uh, come together on a, an on all TV. And inside we had a larger screening and um, we were kind of split screen the actual game and the protest outside the stadium because in, in Brazil there was a lot of uprising against the, against the transformation through the, through the football. So we are trying to also bring some critical issues in popular formats. That's one of the kind of uh, one of our aims in the, in the ZKU. But the ZKO is beside the individual, individual practice of the, um, of the fellows. Um, we also launch uh, some programs. And this program I'm showing you here is um, the Artist Displacement Program. Um, it's also part of the Artisitia uh, network. And initially, Samuel, he didn't mention it. He was working with us before and also uh, worked on this. It was called Artist Placement then. Mm -hmm. We put a displacement in front to give it some some new uh, link. And um, the idea is to bring artists into use by placing them or displacing them in organizations of public services. So going like really into the urban fabric. Uh, and we have uh, three running now, one working with the uh, Stadtreinigung, Berliner, um, so the cleaning, cleaning company doing all the cleaning of the streets and the garbage, etc. So handling all the garbage in the city. Another one at the um, at the firefighters, and Jan Esch, he is uh, at Red Cross. I think Nato Thompson said it in the beginning. You wouldn't call uh, Red Cross an artistic uh, social action, but um, he is intervening now. You can see him here. How he is working in different departments of the Red Cross, and. Um, looking on the change of volunteering in organizations like the Red Cross and this new organizational forms through new media, like what could be very well seen in Germany through um, uh, the, the coming of many refugees. So the people organized themselves and the, and the Red Cross was not reaching out to the people anymore because they, they organized themselves. So there are more to come uh, for the police, for the train, uh, in the train station, the main train station, and the water, um, Wasserbetriebe, and also placement in the prison, displacement. Um, another of our programs is just starting next week uh, with a conference. Uh, we call it Hacking Urban Furniture. And um, urban furniture is is a tool merely for advertisement. So there's this, since many years now, the coalition of uh, Deco and Val and other companies, Ströer, 
to, um, to give public service to the city, like uh, toilets or benches, and therefore using the spaces for advertisement. And um, the, the furniture they produce are often like in the language or for the, um, for the advertisement partners instead of serving the people. So we are looking on new ways or different ways on how to kind of um, produce uh, urban furniture, also looking at the economy which is produced, like can we also um, rather have individual site-specific furniture which is maintained by a neighbor and can um, organize some new economy through that. And uh, within that program there are, um, there are 10 researchers um, on different uh, continents. Uh, there, there will be five commissioned artworks in Berlin. There will be a, a film program and also a Hannah Arendt working group uh, led by Fred Dewey. Um, it will take place on, on different, um, in different public or uh, bottom-up initiatives, both. And the Hannah Arendt text will be read there. So another link to Tanya Bruguera. Mm. Um, maybe to conclude, um, I'm showing you this picture of the, of the mushroom farm. So the mushroom has a big, uh, the body of the mushroom is hidden under the ground and only the mushrooms pop up when there is a certain kind of humidity, humidity and um, temperature, so the right atmosphere. And um, if we can kind of identify this atmosphere, we can get really, really big, uh, make a big champion. <laughs> Thank you.